Hey, good morning or good night or good afternoon, whatever time you are looking at this Chem 185 team. We're going to be introducing the basic concept of equilibrium today, a critical concept to understand because this is going to cover a lot, of, a good at least third of this whole semester, chapters 15, 16, uh, 17, 18, and 24. So once you grab this concept, which I think is one of the more simple ones for a lot of people. Some people like kinetics more, some people like thermo, but equilibrium tends to jive with most people a little bit more. Once you've got this basic concept, then we'll just apply it to different things, but the fundamental concept will be the same, and it's smooth sailing at that point. Um, so equilibrium in general is when, as you can see on the board here, you have two opposing processes occurring at the same rate. Right Now we're going to be looking at two different aspects of this and focusing on one. There's static equilibrium and there's dynamic equilibrium. So static equilibrium is when you have two opposing processes, but they're not in constant motion. So picture like two sumo wrestlers, boom, right? Oh, and they're pushing exactly the same strength, but it's in opposite directions and neither are moving anywhere. Like my fists, right? Doing my isokinetic exercises, right? Boom. That would be static equilibrium. We're not interested in that as chemists. We're interested in dynamic equilibrium, which means you have these in constant motion. Okay, you may have been introduced to this in Chem 130, um, depending on the, you know, whether the professor ran out of time or not. Um, I typically teach it when I used to teach Chem 130. Um, so we'll be looking, obviously, at chemical reactions. So I'll t I'm going to do chemical uh, dynamic equilibrium in the next video. I just want to do the basic concept of dynamic equilibrium, kind of like what you've seen in your everyday life, right? Um, my favorite one, I love finances and money and that kind of stuff. So you can look at, say, your bank account, right? You can look at uh, dynamic equilibrium that way. So imagine your bank account is here, right? So you've got a certain amount, certain amount of money in your bank account. And you've got two essential things. You've got income right? So you've got income coming in and you've got your spending going out, right? So I would call that two opposing processes, right? You're making your money, you're spending your money. Now, if you make 50000 a year or 10000 a year or 300000 a year, doesn't matter what it is, but if say we're making 5000 uh, a month and you're spending 5000 a month, your bank account is not going to change, right? But money's going in, money's going out. It's not the same dollar sitting there. You're constantly writing checks. You've got electronic deposits coming in, that kind of stuff, right? So that'd be great. You're not going forward, you're not be going backwards. But if you're out of financial equilibrium, that could be good or bad, right? So let's say we're out of financial equilibrium in a bad way, which is a lot of Americans, right? So in that case, say you're making 5000 a month, but you're spending 6000 a month. That's not good because now your bank account's dropping 1000 a month and most people can't handle it. They go to zero and then they start putting it on their credit cards and borrowing money and then going into debt. You're way out of financial equilibrium in a bad way, all right? That's a good way to die broke, right? Now, if you switch that and go out of financial equilibrium in a good way, Let's say you make five thousand a month, but you only spend four thousand. Hey, then your bank account will be going up a thousand a month. That's a good thing. So ideally, in life, you don't want to be in financial equilibrium. You want to be going on the positive side of it. But in some situations, financial equilibrium is good. Another one uh, is for people who exercise or count calories or things like that. Um, I call it my caloric equilibrium, right? So in the same situation, so instead of picturing a bank account, picture your body size or something like that, right? And then you've got your what you're eating, right? And what you're burning up, right? So you can control your calories by one of two ways, right? You can either eat less or exercise more, <laughs> right? So that's kind of how that works out. And if you're in caloric equilibrium, your body size isn't going to change too much right on. But if you're out of caloric equilibrium, which unfortunately my gym just closed and I'm home more and I'm eating more, I'm not in the best caloric equilibrium. So what's happening to me right now, my caloric income, I'm eating more, is growing. My caloric spending is changing because it's going down because I'm not exercising as much because the stupid gym is closed. So what happens is this is no longer in equilibrium and I get more, blah, 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 I get more of that going on, right? But if you want to change that around, right? Exercise more, right? Have more going out or eat less, less caloric income. And you can actually decrease your body size. But for a lot of people, if you equate those, you're in uh, caloric equilibrium. So anyway, those are just some common examples of everyday life equilibrium. We will hit 
chemical equilibrium and the specific ones we're going to do in the next several chapters in the next video. You guys rock. Keep it up.